This is a quick demonstration of the Viper object stack. Here we're logging into the Viper controller, which is a simple and easy SDS control plane, abstracting out all storage, and it integrates with the Viper data service for block and HDFS storage. Here what we're requesting is an object uh, a pool, a bucket, and uh, we've actually just now created it. It's done. It's that simple. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to log into an application. So we've created an application using Pivotal Cloud Foundry. I'm going to log in and I'm going to create an application that will consume um, this object storage. And it's going to use it for uh, something that object storage models are very good for, which is a photo app. So here we've got this application that we've created. It's running as a VM on top of a VMware powered SDDC model. And you can see that uh, this uh, has got a MySQL database and it's also accessing that S3 object store. So uh, here you can see we're binding that S3 object store that we created there earlier with uh, Viper. Viper can actually present as S3 objects, as Atmos objects, and as Swift objects. It can also simultaneously present as HDFS storage, which is a really unique capability in the industry. So now if we log into the individual application, we're going to go in and we're going to log in and we're going to upload a series of photos. Now these photos are photos from uh, EMC World from uh, years past. We're going to upload them uh, via the web client. Boom. We're going to drag and drop a bunch of photos into this uh, uh, upload uh, app and there they go. They're uploading. Now if you imagine and you multiply this by the millions of clients that a web app like this might have, it can consume petabytes and petabytes of storage. Now the beautiful thing about object stores is that they can actually really um, uh, expand and change dynamically. So uh, here you can see lots and lots of photos that are now uploaded. What we've done is we've actually tied this in into VC Ops for this de demonstration where you can actually track uh, the amount of consumed object storage uh, here dynamically and you can see that right now it's yellow it was at seven point change and it's now increased up to eight point X which has actually hit a threshold. Now we can automatically expand out object nodes using Viper because Viper object nodes can be added completely dynamically it's very elastic so here what we've got is we've actually created a workflow that automatically when you hit thresholds automatically creates more Viper object stacks and you can see that the provision capacity increased which meant that we got back into the green. Pretty cool. It shows you the power of the Viper object stack. It shows you how easily it can integrate in using S3, Swift, and uh, Atmos APIs as object storage, but also as well as HDFS into applications. And it shows you the power of object stores, which is their elasticity. Very easy to expand and contract. Again, this can run on top of any sort of infrastructure, including commodity off-the-shelf servers, as well as customers' existing EMC and non-EMC storage environments. Thanks. Hope you liked this demo. I think it's really darn cool.